Hello, Alexander here once again. Chapter 13, Stocks, Problem 13, 5A, Entries for Selected Corporate Transactions. So this is, the intro is, these selected transactions completed by Big Water Boating Corporation during the current fiscal year are as follows. So we're just going to do some stock entries and and I'll explain them on the way. So January 3rd, split the common stock 3 for 1 and reduce the par value from 90 to $30 per share. After the split, there were 750,000 common shares outstanding. There's no entry for that. So when you do a stock split, there's no entry on the books. But what happens is the, the, the total value of the stock doesn't change, but the number of shares does. So I tried to, this is why I'm doing the video like this, because I, if I try to do a, a pullback view, it's everything's too small to actually see. So you start with 250,000 shares, you split them three for one, now you have 750,000 shares. That's what that is. And you wanna make sure you date things as you go, because it just makes your life easier in accounting. And you're gonna to wanna to use these T accounts to track everything because it's just going to streamline uh, what you're going to be doing. And uh, here's a, a uh, example, a visual example. Before the split, let's say you have a $10 pizza and you have four slices. Before, and then you say, you know what, we're going to split the pizza like a, like a stock split. After the split, a three for one. So for every one slice, you get three slices. You're going to have 12 slices now, but the cost of the pizza is still $10. So that's what a, basically the, the whole idea of a stock split is you get more slices or shares, but the value doesn't change. So the value per share goes down, but um, altogether it's the, sa it's the same overall value. Okay, so the next, the next one is April 7th. We uh, purchased 50,000 shares of the corporation's own common stock at $33 per share, recording the stock cost. So when you buy treasury stock, when you when the company buys shares back, it's gonna you're gonna debit treasury stock for the full price, and you're gonna debit uh, credit cash for the amount that you spent. So in this case, one million six hundred fifty thousand, and uh, here's we debit the, we debit treasury on the seventh, and we bought fifty thousand. So we want to track also the total cost and the number of shares because it's gonna make our life easier. So a company can buy shares back. And then, and it'll do that for many reasons. Uh, and, uh, to increase the price per share or to uh, increase dividends per share because there's less shares out. Okay, on May 1st, they declared a dividend, declared seven annual dividends of $1.40 on 35,000 shares of preferred stock and 9,000, nine cents on the common stock so recorded on may 15th payable on june 1st so may 1st you record it or um yeah may 1st uh may 1st is when they declare it so you you put it in the books when they declare it so cash dividend you uh, multiply the common out and you multiply the uh, preferred out, and that gives us $112,000. That's what you, you debit cash dividend. And then what you do is you credit cash dividend payable. And then you come over here and put it in your T accounts. So you cash dividend, $112,000, uh, cash dividend payable. So we've recorded the dividend. That debit to cash dividend is going to reduce our retained earnings at the end of the, at the end of the month when we close it out. To, uh, retained earnings it's basically an expense and the cash dividend payable will go away on the next entry uh, it's a liability just to remember that we have to pay it so the next one is June 1st we paid the cash dividend so that's just simply debiting the payable taking it off the books and crediting the cash it's going out the door so debit the payable credit the cash and see right here we debited the payable which zeroes it out I didn't bother making a cash T account because it didn't give us a beginning balance and it didn't ask about any of it, think about cash. Okay, and then July 29th, we sold 
36,000 shares of Treasury stock at $40 a share receiving cash. So we debit the amount of money we, we received, but here's, the, here's the, where it changes. Treasury, we recorded cost. So when we take it off the books, we take it off at 33 bucks a share, which is only 1188000 The remaining amount, the, uh, what was it, $6 over? Six or seven, seven, seven bucks over? That's paid in capital in excess of par treasury stock, which is just another equity account, don't worry. It goes under um, the equity section of the balance sheet. It's, this is a way a company, another way can, can make money. It can buy its shares back at low price as the share price goes up, sell the shares back, make a little extra money. So where is that? At? Okay, paid in capital, excess of par treasury stock, it gets its own account. And then the treasury stock goes down by the 188, and the shares go down by 36,000, which leaves us only 14,000 left. And then, so treasury is pretty interesting. It's a good strategy if you want to uh, reduce the amount on the market. All right, November 15th declared semi annual dividends of $1.40 on preferred and 15 cents on common stock. Before the stock dividend. Oh, and by the way, when we do, when we when we pay that cash dividend in the beginning, that that first time, we don't take into account the seven hundred fifty thousand shares. Remember, we we bought back treasury stock, so we automatically uh, that entry. See that how I debited fifty thousand? We only had seventy seven hundred thousand shares after we bought back treasury. So when you buy treasury, you don't pay dividends on treasury stock. So you have to remember. That's why you want to do a T account. Keep track of how many shares you're buying back because you don't pay dividends on that. If, you, if, you're, if you're paying dividends on treasury stock that you've bought back, you're gonna get the wrong answer. So just keep track of how many actual shares are in the market. Shares you buy back, leave the market. They're no longer um, dividend paying. And then, because um, it'd be redundant to pay, to pay ourselves the dividend when we're the company issuing the shares. All right, so, um, of course, cash dividends are easy. Just multiply the amount per share by the total shares. Uh, you don't have to differentiate preferred or whatnot on the dividend. So here we go. 159, 159,400. And then here's the difference is the stock dividend. It's a 2% on common share stock dividend. So take the amount of common shares outstanding, which is... Uh, after we bought some back, it'd be 736,000 shares, uh, if I'm not mistaken. See how I added it? 736,000 shares. Times that by 2%, that's the amount of shares you're issuing. Now, times that amount of shares by how much, how, how much the shares are worth, which is 41 bucks, gives you the amount of the stock dividend, 600 three thousand five hundred and twenty bucks and so we put that as a stock dividend debit which will re, um, reduce the retained earnings but by is what what we'll see after we issue the stock it'll actually bring the balance back up so stock dividends don't increase or decrease equity they do dilute it because they issue more shares out which means less earnings per share less dividends per share and so and then you credit stock dividends distributable for the same amount you see that so far, I think we're doing pretty well. And then on December 31st, paid the cash dividends and issued the certificates for the common stock dividend. So now we can hand out the cash and we can give out the stock. So debit the payable again for the cash dividends payable for the amount originally recorded, 159400 Now in your book, it's going to might be a different, um, different numbers because it changes from addition to addition but don't worry, and then you credit cash. And then stock dividends distributable, you debit, take it off the books, and you credit the common stock for the original par value of 33,000. You see that, how it's different, how it splits. So you're gonna credit it for 441,600, and then credit and then credit it for paid in capital in excess of par common stock for the, the difference. 
161,920. And how you get that is, you know how we multiplied the new stock we came up with by the 41? Well, if you want to figure out how much just the, um, what the excess is, times that number by the $33 par value, subtract them, and you should get the 161920 So that's the difference. That's the extra money that the stock is worth. So we actually increased our equity by issuing a stock dividend because the market value was higher than our par. And so that's this uh, stock dividend example. It was a, it's a big, it's a very intensive problem. Um, but I believe you can accomplish it. And so if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I thought this was a good example of the treasury and the dividend, which can throw people off because you have to keep track with T accounts the whole way through. So thank you so much. And oh, and by the way, treasury stock is a net is a debit so it's going to bring down your equity so thank you so much uh, feel free to like and subscribe and comment and i'll see you for the next one thank you